so what we have is I'm just going to quickly welcome everybody. Then I'm going to hand it over to Shoa, who's going to, from the Software Sustainability Institute, who's going to tell us what they do and a bit about this communities of practice initiative that I've been chatting to him about. Uh, then we're going to hear from Chris Cannon, who's a research soft engineer uh, who who ran an APSRC funded project trying to achieve some fairly similar kind of things, uh, but for more kind of uh, audio related uh, kind of research. And then we'll hear about some survey results that were run from a survey that was run by us last year. Um, and also maybe some some initial results from this morning um, from Amelia, um, which will also inform what we talk about. Then we have a little five minute break uh, just while to have a quick comfort break and also just to sort out the breakout rooms. And when you come back, you'll find you are in a breakout room. Uh, and then we're going to be doing this activity with this mural app. And that's an interactive activity. So please, um, hopefully you're on a device where you can actually have different screens open so that you can chat uh, and use this website as well. It's very easy to log in to connect you. You don't have to register or anything. But you do need a second screen. So if you're on a mobile device that doesn't allow that with Zoom, you might want to just drag out a, a computer or something or other just to put that URL into. We will pass out the URLs in the breakout rooms once we do that because uh, they're unique to the breakout room. Then we'll come back to the main room uh, and we'll just uh, chat through some of the findings from that. Hopefully there'll be some interesting stuff and I'll just make a few closing remarks and we'll stop. So this morning was all about um, kind of understanding sort of perspectives, understanding what some of the people who are leading this kind of area have been doing. Um, this afternoon is more about us and, you know, what we might do next and, and, and what, uh, what kind of support is available to help people do better things with software. Um, and the point here is, is that um, although quite a lot of the larger toolboxes we've heard about this morning uh, are actually received some government funding of some type at some stage um, actually you know you've kind of got to get over a certain bench sort of a certain threshold before that really is possible um, and a big way to do that um, is to actually just have a community that supports each other um, so we'll be um, looking at questions um, like oh, this slide isn't advancing um, we'll be looking at questions like what are the computational needs of the community? Uh, what, what software is, is required? So both by end users and by other users. That's covered at least in part by the survey we've already run. So that's why we're talking about that. Uh, what, what will the training needs be of, of this community? What, what do people need to know? We've already heard quite a bit about early career researchers and people coming up to speed and documentation and FAQs and things. Who needs training and how? And then what are the barriers to collaboration? Uh, some people do this very well. You know, you get projects like Phoenix, where there's massive international collaboration over long periods of time. Um, but then others where people are working in almost complete isolation. I know that was what I was like when I did my PhD. Um, so, you know, forums, standards of different ways to do something, master classes. I don't know what form that might take. That's what we need to talk about. And hopefully this is not just about, um, you know, just helping other people out I think it does help us get somewhere because if you go back to this kind of idea of different scales of software let's just forget the two on the outside if we go from sort of you producing reproducible research which you as a researcher have responsibility for to get into the next stage where you have a useful toolbox for someone else to use you know if you've only invented some gears uh, you're a bit stuck but if you've got a couple of you no know, a couple of other researchers you've invented pistons and engine blocks and cam belts to come complete this analogy and take it tenuously far, uh, then you can all club together and communicate a bit together and suddenly between you with hopefully not an awful lot of extra work if you're doing this stuff from the start, actually produce things that work together and do a bit more. So that's the sort of vision we're talking about in community, at least I think. So I'm going to stop that now and hand over to, hand over to show up.